Welcome back to the Azure Education Governance Series. This is video nine where we're going to demonstrate naming and tagging. My name is Amy Manley along with Eric DeBoard and David Yola. So Contosa's current state, we've learned a lot about governance and what goes into it, and, but there's still so much more available to, available to us within Azure. So now Contosa will deploy within the Azure portal some of the shared services uh, under the resource groups and create VMs like domain controllers. And I think something important to note here, which is obvious if you've been watching all the videos, is this is the very first time we actually are creating anything. We've been doing a lot of talking, but not doing a lot of creating. <laughs> That's by PowerPoint. So what are resource groups? Uh, they're basically a container to logically group resources together. It's the simplest way to put it. It could also be a lifecycle boundary, like we mentioned before in video eight, the research application that they're going to deploy research app XYZ. So it's going to have all the same life cycle components. Or you can also use it for role-based access control. Example was the Active Directory resource group we're going to create. We only want certain individuals to have access to that resource. It could also be used to roll up costs. So you can use it as a billing management tool. And a resource group can contain many resources, but any single resource can only be in one resource group. And then there's some tips below. Resource groups cannot be nested. So it's not like folders or anything where you can nest them. And they cannot be renamed. And this hey, is just, Amy, just, just, what, just one thing about the renaming. Uh, mm -hmm. There is, uh, that is something that is planned. Uh, but uh, again, if, if, you know, so, you know, the customers will need to uh, plan accordingly, right? So if something needs to be rena renamed, uh, potentially consider moving the resources uh, to a new resource group. All right, and then this is the tagging that we went over in the last video, but um, Contos will be using some business tags, security tags, and automation tags if we have time. So now let's get to the portal. So here's the Azure portal. We're going to create a resource group by clicking here. And you can search for resource group. Click create. We're going to use our naming standard. And resource group location, at times it doesn't matter. It's really metadata, but it can help with automation. So if you eventually use ARM templates and say use the resource groups location for all my VMs, then it'll come into play. But really, it's just a place to store the metadata. And click create. Now, for consistency purposes, mainly one, uh, Amy, when um, someone decided to provision resources in, let's say, the West US region, mm -hmm. then um, might as well just select the West US as an right. example. Definitely makes sense. So, here we can see the other resource groups the Active Directory, the networking, the storage one I just created our VMs. So Amy, I see a, a list here. How could you basically show just the ones that are using your naming convention, all the ones that end in hyphen RG? Sure. Because I see there's a mix here. OK, cool. So you just demoed one of the search features. Uh, and this is why some of our naming conventions, uh, for example, if you want to see everything had the term prod in it, you could probably back up and show prod as well, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is just a tiny example of why naming your actual resources is a little bit different than the tagging mm -hmm. and how they can be the same, you know, but have different reasons. Okay, I'm done. No problem. <laughs> and Amy, the other thing to uh, point out here is, again, we're doing all this uh, through the Azure portal. Mm-hmm. 
But again, all, you know, creating the resource group, assigning the tags, you can also th do through the uh, PowerShell, right, or the CLI or the or an Azure Resource Manager template. So again, but we're going to focus today on just uh, doing these actions using the, the Azure portal. Exactly. So I am going to drill down into my net resource group. And that's where I have my hub VNet, that shared services VNet. And I just want to show the subnets within it, how you, you define a VNet, and then you can carve out subnets within. So I have my AD subnet and then my management tool subnet. So I just wanted to point that out. And of course, we'll be talking about subnets and networking uh, later on in more detail. Exactly. And then, so then in my AD resource group, if I go to my overview, I'll see my two domain controllers. And this is where I could say only David and I have access to it because I don't want. Yeah, and, we, and just to re remind folks, we covered role-based access in a previous video series. And uh, just like we covered before, here's where you can add um, you know permissions uh, to access to this particular resource group and get and assign the the folks a particular role whether it be owner contributor or other roles mm -hmm. so yeah this is where you would add access and we wanted to go over there's tags this is where you can add tags at the resource group level which will be showing shortly but also there's some good settings over here there's resource costs which it's not going to show me for mine policies which we're going to go over in the next video and locks that again helps with restriction and access to comply with governance okay yeah, i mean locks is very interesting uh, we get customers that um, by mistake either running through a, a script they accidentally delete resources. So that's, although we're not gonna focus on, on locks in this video series, that's one thing to call out is that you can leverage the lock feature there to prevent resources mm -hmm. from being deleted. Yeah, we'll definitely so show that, that in the next video. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know that's there. And then this is where I just wanna show the logical container. This is the researchers app. I created some VMs, a database, you know, it's got its VNet in there. So this is where it's that logical container all in the same life cycle. If I delete this resource group, everything's gone. And then I can also give rule-based access control to, you know, individual users or the research group and have them manage their own little, you know, their entire resource group. Something. Sure. Something I was just going to mention here is if you click on the automation script tab down there, mm -hmm. for all those out there who like to um, oh, yeah. create templates and program, this automation script on all in any resource group shows the exact JSON uh, code to deploy exactly everything in this resource group again. So it's uh, this is dynamic script that changes as you add additional uh, objects to your resource group. Yeah, you can download it and tweak it and then deploy. Yeah, so this is very helpful, uh, Amy and Eric, when maybe you deploy a particular environment and then you want to uh, quickly replicate it and mm -hmm. make the other environment be a, maybe your dev test or your, or your you know, a QA environment. So you can leverage these automation scripts to be able to quickly deploy that environment. And uh, Amy, you can also click, if you just want to, quickly just click on the delete yeah I was so, gonna do that you read my mind I was gonna show what yeah. happens oh let's see so just like you were mentioning if you wanted to delete. let's say you created a resource group to test some application and then once you wanted to delete everything then you click delete and uh, in essence will delete all the resources within that resource group so it's a really nice way to uh, like I said, create resource group, deploy some test environments, and then once you're done, go ahead and delete every resource that's contained within the resource group. Exactly. 
it does warn you, and it makes you type in the resource group name, so not just a yes or no or a checkbox at least. For now, I'll just leave everything here. And that brings us on to the tags. So we had our naming convention to help us, but we also have tagging to drill down further. So we went to our storage account that we mentioned earlier, the ITSS prod backup store. And here's where, actually, I'll get back to the, you can click here to add tags. This can be automated as well or using Azure policy. But for now, we just want to show you in the portal where you can add application, what it's for, maybe the cost center, who it's managed by. This, I mean, this was just done with manually typing it in. So, One thing to note here, Amy, is that the, the interface in the Azure portal is pretty consistent. You were showing at the resource group level, and you saw the same area where you specify role-based access, mm -hmm. where you specify tags and other configuration settings like the locks, right? So now you are at the actual resource level, happens to be a storage account, and it's it's the same consistency, right? Uh, you can specify permissions and also mm -hmm. the tags, like you mentioned. Yep, still have permissions here. We can drill down. This will be different, but um, yeah, we both have permissions, and then the locks, like you mentioned. This is where you would add it. So we'll go back. So that brings us to Contosa's next steps. Now that they've deployed several services in Azure using their naming standards and their tagging, they're still concerned about governance. So they're going to learn more about what Azure policy can do for them to restrict their VM sizes and where people can deploy, and also look into those resource locks to prevent accidental deletion. And that's the end of our video. Thank you.